1,800 kilometer journey has led me to the southern island of Mindanao. A third of this 10 million hectare island is still untamed. And deep in its wild terrain is my destination. It's taken me a month to get this far, traveling from Metro Manila across the Visayas. Now I'm in Butuan, the administrative center of the region and the last city of my journey. From here on out, the ride is gonna get more rugged. In fact, just getting out of town is pretty wild. So this is what a Skylab looks like. It's just a regular motorcycle with two wheels, but it has this attachment that allows it to carry up to nine people. And when it's not loaded with passengers, it's full of rice and other supplies on their way up to the mountains. I can't leave without riding one once, and it'll be nice to have someone else do the driving for a change. Mind if I join? Okay, how do I get on here? Ah, I'm a little nervous. Ah. Okay, I'm on. Ah. Onward. <laughs> ah. Things can only get crazier because I'm heading for Delta Discovery Park. One of the best ways to get a bird's eye view of the area is to find a zip line. And here in Butuan, I found one of the longest zip lines in Asia. Soaring through the air 1.3 kilometers should give me plenty of time to take in this view. Okay, I think I'm ready. Here we go! I want to ride straight for the mountains, but the roads leading there are closed for repairs. The only way to the Manobos upland villages lies through the town of Talakogan and across the biggest marsh in the Philippines. It's a good thing I've arrived during summer because come monsoon season, much of this place will be underwater. I'm meeting Ruel Hupulan, known to the locals as Hero of the Marsh. He built floating schools in the area that teach the Manobos who live here in floating houses. And he's agreed to guide me through the marsh. The Agusa Marsh is roughly the size of Metro Manila. It feeds off the Agusan River, the largest river in the Philippines, stretching 350 kilometers from its headwaters in Compostela Valley, draining all the way to Bhutan Bay. People in this area have pretty much built their life around the water, accepting the risks that come with it. You know, Jimmy, during rainy season, the water level will rise up, up to 30 meters. You see these trees? Mm -hmm. This will be filled up with water. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. And you know, that's uh, came from Bukidnon, province of Bukidnon, Davao, and northeastern Mindanao. There's Over. so many places that the water is coming from. That's why there's so much water and it goes high very fast. Yes, yes. And these trees stay alive the whole time they're covered in water. It, it makes a unique uh, of this uh, kind of trees and we call this marsh trees. Beautiful. Okay, uh, you know, Jimmy, every part of the marsh is very unique. They have different species, like, for example, the reptile, the crocodile. Crocodiles? Here. Yeah, they cannot pump anywhere. There are two kinds of crocodiles here. Number one is the Philippine crocodile, and the other one is the saltwater crocodile, which is a huge crocodile. How big are we talking? Actually, it depends, but here, based on my experience, I uh, saw that by myself, it will not be less than 28 to 30 feet. Are you kidding? Crocodile. And you saw that in person? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the crocodiles of movies. Yes, actually, <laughs> but you know, uh, even people here witness that almost every day. Okay, well, if I'm to trust you on that, and I've never seen one that big, do you think we can maybe try to spot one? Okay, we'll try. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, let's okay. go find it. Okay, Jimmy, we are now in the entrance of the lake. So again, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, are you re ready to be eaten? No, I'm <laughs> okay, definitely not ready to be eaten. Don't, 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 don't worry. <laughs> okay, well, I kind of want to see one, but I kind of don't. <laughs> 
Ruel tells me the story of how a 30-foot crocodile attacked and killed a wildlife researcher working in the area. He even showed me a piece of the boat that was left after the vicious attack. Saltwater crocodiles attack about 30 people each year, and half the victims don't make it out alive. But Ruel knows crocodiles are nocturnal, and despite his teasing, he's deliberately taking me through the swamp before sunset. By late afternoon, I'm at the edge of the Monobos Mountain Territory. Crossing the Great Agusan Marsh brings me to the mountains of Agusan del Sur. It's here that I'll find the Monobo priestesses. But before I make my way up, I need to get past the tribe's swordsmen, masters of the martial art of Escapi. Learning Escapi is a rite of passage for the tribe's males. To be welcomed into the priestess's company, I decided to learn a little as well. Hi, Sir Toto. Uh, hello. Hi, very nice to meet you here. Same here. I sought you out because um, I wanted to find out more about Escapi. It's such a beautiful art form, but I needed to learn a little bit more about it. Okay. The history of Escapi uh, is connected to the history of the Balangay boat, which dates back to somewhere 4th century. So Escapi is the root of modern Escrima, like uh, Balintawak and Dusi Paris. I did learn a little bit of Balintawak in Cebu. Well, to add to my experience, I'd like to try and learn a couple of moves, if possible. Do you okay. think I can? No problem. Escapi has only four basic moves. Charge, thrust, cut, and slash. Minimal movement, maximum damage. True swordsmen wield the traditional blade called the Mina Spot. Fortunately, we're just using a stick for now. No, 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 no. It's, it's more hit here. Okay. Because this one is a blade, remember? First, sever the arm and leg to render your opponent mobile. Then a cut to the vulnerable armpit. And to finish, a quick slash at the neck deals death in an instant. Yeah. Escapi sword work is dazzling, but much of its power actually lies in its intricate footwork. Maybe it's a result of fighting in challenging terrains and uneven ground. I'm on the last leg of my journey where I'm gonna switch from my bike to an ATV to get up the trail that'll take me up the mountain. But first, I need to get the ATV to the trail, and I found a really tough truck to do just that. I'm so glad to be taking a break from the scorching sun. The truck's interior is cool and comfortable. The multi-link suspension is making the ride smooth and the rough roads virtually unnoticeable. No travel fatigue here. I've gotten my ATV up to the trails that will lead me to the Monobo tribe and my final destination. From here, it's going to get really bumpy, but I expect it'll be a super fun ride. Okay, let's get her down. Nice. Thank you, boys. Have a map. The priestess's location is a result of the Monobo's fighting skills. It allowed the tribe to resist Christian and Muslim missionaries until 1877, when the Spanish Jesuits resorted to firepower and drove much of the tribe deeper into the mountains. The deep valleys of Agusan and the strength of their warriors have protected the Monobo from the outside world for centuries. They've maintained their belief in the spirits of the natural world. Even their intricate clothing, jewelry, and weapons are believed to possess souls. I've finally reached the end point of my journey, and I'm about to meet the priestess of the Monobo tribe. Apparently, they have the ability to dream my life story and translate it into a weaving. I don't know how it's possible they can dream of a life that lives so far away and translate it into something tangible. So I've come to see just how close their dreams can be to my reality. Hello, I'm Jamie. I'm Rubilin. Rubilin, so nice to meet you. I've ridden a long way to find you. I want to see if it's possible to have my life story told through a weaving. Opo, gumagawa po kami ng suyam. Yung nanay ko lang po yung nagbuborda po. Kaya kailangan na ipagpatuloy yung para hindi mawala sa tribu namin. Kaya 
talagang mahalaga po to sa amin. I would love for my life story to be a part of that tradition. How does it work exactly? May gumagabay na yung tinatawag namin na diwata. Kasi yun po ang nagbibigay ng kakayanan sa amin na para makuha namin yung mga pagsusuyam, yung mga design, at saka isa pa yung kahulugan po niya. That's amazing. I can't believe that you feel the presence of another being and this is the thing that's helping you weave my story. So there's something or someone else involved as well that you can't see or touch. These women are bringing out my innermost thoughts and emotions. They're asking me things I haven't answered before, and they leave me with no choice but to be completely honest. Well, because I am curious, but it is also important to me right now. Am I ready to find out? I don't know, but do I want to? Yes. Um, it's been something that I've been searching for a while now, and um, I'm feeling a bit lost. So I think I might need help to be able to reach inside and figure out what I want to do and what I need to do. And now I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Before the weaving starts, the priestesses celebrate my arrival with a binalan, a dance that tells of a sacred hawk that tried to eat some chicks. Instead, it was killed by Manobo hunters. The Manobo embroidery, or suyam, is done solely by hand. The three priestesses spend literally every waking hour on my cloak, and still, it takes them three whole days. Good afternoon. Hello, Robbie Lynn. Is this my weaving? Ah! Oh my gosh. It's so beautiful. Since I've been here, I've noticed that the theme of the color has been black, white, and yellow. Is there a significance for that theme? Ito po ay ang color talaga ng manubo ay apat lang. Yun ay simbolo ng katapangan po ng manubo. Well, that leads me to ask, what did you dream and what do these designs mean? Ito po ay simbolo po ng dahil po sa mahilig at tumuklas ng iba-ibang lahi o kultura, kaya ito yung simbolo ng pagdalakbay mo. Ito naman po, pangalawa ay simbolo ng kahit dami yung natutuklasan mo na iba-ibang tribo o lahi, mayroon din na hindi mo naikuntindihan pero tinatanggap mo pa rin ang buong mo. Ito naman po dito sa lihi, simbolo po ng kahit saan ka pumunta, ito yung parang gabay sa'yo. Kasi nakikita ko din na kahit hindi mo pinapansin, pero may spirit ka. Kailangan lang na i-open yung isip mo para mag-connect sa puso mo yung spirit. Uh, ito ay ginawa ko na special sa'yo kasi ito po yung kahulugan ng buhay namin na bilang isang manubo. I think the thing I love the most about this is that it doesn't just tell me the story of my life, but it also tells the story of your lives and your tribe's life, and now how our lives have come together and intertwined. And I think this whole journey and my being here has had such a calming effect on me and given me a bit of strength. And uh, I think, yeah, it's, I feel stronger and uh, able to carry forward with my life, and having this close to my heart makes me feel very special. So for that, I say, sa